Hi everyone, my name is Benjamin Nock, and in today's video I want to talk to you guys about blade bait fishing. Now this video here is going to cover everything that you need to know to pick up a blade bait, go out to your home body water and catch fish. Um, it's going to talk about the rod reel line setup, the colors that I choose, where, when and how I throw it to put fish into the boat. Now basically what is a blade bait? A blade bait is a piece of metal with some lead on it and two hooks and it's a great cold water fishing lure. The reason for that is that it puts off a very very tight vibration. It's not like a lipless crankbait in the sense that it has rattles, kind of intrusive and obnoxious. Um, basically all the action, all of the sound of the lure is imparted through the vibration of the blade and because the blade is so thin, because the body is so thin, any vibration that that bait puts off is very minimal um, and it's a great cold water lure. It basically imitates anything that those fish could be feeding on. For the most part I think it imitates small bait fish or gobies down along the bottom but regardless of what fish you're fishing for, what species of fish you're fishing for, whether it's smallmouth, lake trout, carp, it doesn't matter these fish are going to eat a blade bait. Now in my opinion a blade bait works best when that water is 50 degrees or below maybe just into 50 degrees but anywhere low 50s and below a blade bait's going to shine those fish aren't looking to move very much bass are cold-blooded creatures so their metabolism slows down they don't have to eat as much um, and so they don't really want to chase their meals as far a blade bait's a great way to put that bait in front of their face for a long period of time and make them eat a lot of times what I like to do is soak a blade bait and what that means is let a blade bait sit on the bottom for a long time and bass are observant creatures, especially in relatively clear water for smallmouth. They know what's going on around them. So if there's a bait sitting in front of them, if there's a little minnow sitting in front of them, they know that it's there. Sometimes it takes a little bit of sitting the bait there to get them to come over and eat it. So there are three main colors that I like to fish on a blade bait. The first is a silver blade. This is probably my all-time favorite color. Uh, a silver blade works really, really well all over, everywhere that I've fished. It basically imitates the little minnows um, and just has a really good profile down in the water. But I also fish a gold in a, plain, in a painted blade. I fish a gold blade bait when I'm fishing anywhere that there's perch, anywhere that there's emerald shiners or little minnows that have more of a gold profile. Um, it also works really well for largemouth bass that are typically feeding on bluegills um, and other small bait fish of that nature. But uh, for the most part, a gold blade is anywhere, anytime that I'm fishing around perch, uh, bluegill, or shiners, something that has more of a gold hue. Now, a painted blade, a painted blade can refer to um, a white blade, can refer to a chartreuse blade, but a painted blade is really my go-to in low light situations. When it's really overcast, when it's nasty, when the weather just really isn't like what you'd like to be when you're out there fishing, that's when I would go with a painted blade. A painted blade is gonna offer you a bigger silhouette, a better image in the water. So when your water color changes or it's overcast or cloudy and those fish can't get as good of a look at your, bit, at your blade, that's what I'm going to switch up to a painted blade. A white is my favorite color for a painted blade. It just really imitates a lot of things natural in the water column. Uh, I played around with the chartreuse blade a little bit, but for me, white is my main color when I need a painted blade, when I need something to stand out down there in the water. Now let's take a look at my recommended setup for throwing a blade bait. Starting out with the rod. The rod that I like to throw it on is a spinning setup and this is for all size blade baits up to three quarters of an ounce. A spinning setup allows me to throw it on lighter line which gets the blade activated sooner. Um, typically, just in general, spinning rods handle lighter line than bait casters. So I can take this, fish it on 15 pound braid to eight pound or seven pound fluorocarbon and I'll be able to fish it a lot more effectively. Now, when I talk about activation of the blade, what that means is getting the blade to actually start vibrating down there on the bottom. Now, this is a trick my buddy Nathan Drodowski showed me, but the lighter line you put in front of something, the quicker it's going to activate, whether that's a chatterbait or a blade bait. The lighter diameter line that you can go with, the faster that lure is going to start working. Activation is just when the blade lifts off the bottom and starts vibrating. Now, with a bait casting setup and 15 pound test line, you're gonna get that blade to come off the bottom before it actually starts vibrating. Um, and this is gonna work a lot faster. So I'd like to throw it on a spinning setup. This is the Arc Rods Randall Tharp Series seven foot medium extra fast rod. Any rod in that seven foot to seven foot six range, medium action, 
extra fast or fast tip is going to be a great spinning rod to throw. Um, and I like to throw it on a 3000 size spinning reel. This is a loose custom speed spin. Um, but I like that 3000 size, it manages line a bit better. And when it's cold out, you really need good line management so your line doesn't get all kinked up and coiled on your reel. You also need something with a good drag system because you're fishing and fighting these big fish on little number six treble hooks typically. So something with a good drag is really, really important. So this is basically my rod reel line setup that I like to throw this on, 15 pound braid to seven pound fluorocarbon. Most typically I'm going to throw a half or a 5 8 ounce blade bait. Now there are some guys that like to float a blade bait down and when they say float a blade bait they're talking a quarter ounce or a 3 8 ounce blade. Um, in deep water when those fish are suspended up they'll take and they'll basically float a blade bait. It's going to flutter slow, allow those fish to come up and get it or they can swim it through the water column. I'm typically fishing my blade along the bottom so a half or 5 8 ounce spinning setup is absolutely perfect for me. A lot of guys go way too heavy on blades and Maybe this is my personal opinion, but because they're throwing it on a bait casting setup, they have to go to like a three quarter ounce blade. I think that's gonna lose you some bites. Um, fishing that five eighths ounce on a spinning setup, I can fish it all the way down to 35 plus feet and keep in contact with that bait. You're gonna get faster activation and I think it helps you detect and get a couple more bites. So with that said, that is my setup. Now I'm gonna show you guys how I fish it. I'm also gonna incorporate some clips of me fishing it on the Great Lakes, basically my favorite place to throw a blade because this really isn't perfect blade condition. So you're not gonna get all the fish catches you might get out of my older footage. So just kind of starting out, I like to make a long cast with my blade and you will notice that it'll get fouled up. Now when I say fouled, your line's gonna either wrap around your hooks or it's gonna wrap around um, that little clip in the front of the blade and that's gonna impede the action of the bait. Your bait won't work right if it's fouled. So what you need to do is reel it in, take it off the hooks, and recast. Um, a lot of times what I've noticed is if your blade flies perfectly straight, for whatever reason, that's typically when it's gonna get hung. It's not when it's helicoptering. It's when your blade flies perfectly straight. So all I do to fish this bait, cast it out, let it sink to the bottom, and I just make really slow rod pulls. I just barely want to feel that bait lift up, start to vibrate, and go back down to the bottom. A lot of times, like I said, these fish are super lethargic, so they don't want to move a long ways. So by just giving it that slight vibration, that slight movement, these fish notice it's there. Oh, I felt like I got a bite. These fish notice it's there, they're gonna come over it and eat it. A lot of times they choke the blade because it's kind of moving so slowly they can get a really good ambush point on it and get the entire blade and just crush it. So where do I like to throw a blade? Where do I find it most effective? I like to throw it in areas that smallmouth are feeding on or around rocks. Now it'll work okay in grass but because it's a treble hook bait I find that it works best around rock basically areas or transitions. Um, the best spots I've ever found have been rock to sand transitions where you're on the edge of the rock, there's a little bit of sand, but somewhere that there's not a lot of like muck or dead or shallow grass. There. That's a big fish. Oh, one hook. Please, baby. Please, baby. Oh! There. There's another absolute giant. Torn up from lampreys. Otherwise, super healthy. Probably three and a half, four pound fish. Look at, you can tell he's sitting on bottom. See how scraped up his belly is? <sighs> he's sitting on bottom, tail down, looking up, looking for fish, looking for bait fish, looking for gobies, looking for whatever's on the bottom down there that these fish are eating. It's 
saw him. I think that's a big fish. It looks giant on the panoptics. Yeah. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh my word. Oh my word. Look at how big this fish is. Oh my word. Guys, here's a better look at that fish. Just about six pounds. She's about five and three quarters, six pounds. I can't get a good weight, it's bouncing too much. But that is a giant, ginormous fish. This is my biggest fish of the year so far. I hope that provides you guys all the answers you need on how to go out and blade bait so you can go out and be confident in throwing a blade on your home body's water. If you have any questions or comments, let me know in the comment section below. If you're interested in picking up or purchasing any blades, I do sell them on my website, brnoakfishing.com slash shop. Link will be down in the description below as well as a link to some painted blades for you guys. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, take care, tight lines. God bless. Pursue your passion.